Hey, so some of you know me for my photography. I'm actually a 3D artist. I worked in the games industry for like five years and photography is my hobby, but I want to start doing a bit more 3D videos. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a smudge fingerprint texture. This is like a texture that you would put on a 3D model to give it like that human hands kind of touched greasy fingerprints type of look. They look really cool when they're done well. I'll show an example. You can use them on glass, plastics, shiny metal. It'll just give an extra level of depth to your 3D objects. Now, if you just want to get your hands on a set, there is a link down in the description that you can check out. I'll talk more about that later, but for now, let's get into how you can actually make your own. You're going to need some kind of decent camera, so ideally like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. It's important that you can shoot raw because the subtraction technique that we're going to use to get the fingerprints and smudges off our surface has to be done linearly and it's going to work a lot better with a raw file than with say a JPEG. Set your image quality to raw and you're going to want to shoot in manual mode as well. You're going to need a tripod and a good source of light like a window. I'm actually in my spare room right now and I've got a nice north facing window which gives me like soft light throughout the day so it's really good for things like this and you're going to need some kind of shiny surface. If you have a tablet, it's going to work perfectly. I'm using my iPad Pro because it's nice and big. You could use a phone as well, it should work okay. Now I'm going to be showing you a pretty straightforward way of doing this that most people should be able to follow along with just fine. If you want to get even better results, there are a few tips that I have, which I'll give more towards the end. But for now, I'll just show you my setup and then we'll get into it. All right, so over here I've got my window. You can see the lights coming in and it's hitting the floor quite nicely down here. I've got my tripod set up with my camera pointing straight down. You'll see I've got this thing down on the floor here. This is actually a color checker. and I'm gonna be using it to get correct white balance. If you don't have one of these, it doesn't matter. In fact, the main reason I put it on the floor is so that I can put my iPad Pro down and line it up and I know that now it'll be lined up correctly in the camera when I look through the uh, viewfinder. The chances are if you have an iPad or a phone it's probably already pretty grimy and pretty fingerprinty and pretty dusty. That's good. Just put it down as it is. The real magic of this technique comes when we do the cleaning later. But first we need to take a shot like this so let's go up to the camera. All right, so here we go. You can see I've got it lined up. It doesn't have to be super accurate. I'm just mainly trying to get the actual screen part, which is sort of this lighter area in the center, in the frame without cutting off any of the edges. You'll want to set all of your controls to manual and set your white balance correctly. I wouldn't suggest using auto because it might change in between shots. You just want to have everything set manually. So I've set the ISO to its lowest value, which on this camera is 64. That will allow you to drop your shutter speed right down and get lots of light so your image will be a lot cleaner and won't have much noise. And I've also picked my aperture as f5.6 because I happen to know on this lens it's a nice sharp aperture across the frame. And the shutter speed in this case is two seconds. So I'm just gonna zoom in and make sure that we're in focus. There we go. Right. When I press the shutter, I'm just going to stand back out of the way because you'll notice that my reflection is actually showing up in the shot. So for each shot that I take, I want to make sure that I stand back and I'm not anywhere in the reflection because we don't want that to change between pictures. And I've set a three second timer. So when I press the shutter, I'll stand back. Now it'll take the exposure and now it's done. So let's just check that. There we go. Looks good. I can see some nice detail there, looks sharp. Now you'll notice that the reflection of the tripod and the camera is showing up in the frame. This shouldn't cause too much of a problem. 
for the technique we're using but if the lighting conditions are changing a lot and stuff like that it might so if you want even better results you can throw like a black sheet above the camera on the ceiling to try and block out a bit of that reflection and that should make the results much better but I don't think the lighting is changing too much so I'm just gonna move on to the next step which is cleaning the iPad so let's go all right, so the cleaner you get this, the better. No need to go overboard. I'm just using like a glass cleaner that doesn't leave any streaks. And um, I'll finish this off off camera because I need two hands. All right, so now that we've got the surface nice and clean, I'm just gonna place it back down, and line it up with that edge again to get it in the right place in the frame. And I'm just being careful not to touch any of that inner area. And then all we need to do is repeat the same shot. So everything should still be in focus. The setting should still be correct. So I'm just going to take the exposure and then again, step out of the way to make sure I'm not in the reflection. All right, so we're done. Just check out our results. So now you can see we have one version which is clean and one version which looks exactly the same except it has fingerprints and smudges and dust. So this is exactly what we want. This should work very well. I'm just gonna pull out the memory card and I'll see you over at my PC. So at this point, if you wanted to make more than one of these textures, you would take your surface and clean it again, and then just reapply fingerprints in a slightly different pattern so that you get some varied results. This is where you get to be artistic. Don't just randomly cover your device with fingerprints and expect it to look natural. Try and think about how you hold things in the real world, how fingerprints will kind of group together, and think about smudging and smearing as well maybe stop halfway through and like wipe it down with a t-shirt, really build up some smudging and smearing. And that's gonna give you the most natural looking results. All right, here we are. I'm uh, at my PC now and I've got the files open in Lightroom. If you don't have Lightroom, you can use, I think it's called Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop. I just like Lightroom because it's a bit more streamlined. So I'm um, just gonna select both of these and we're gonna go into develop and I'm just gonna quickly go in and remove chromatic aberration and profile corrections. That's just gonna get rid of any fringing from around the edges and also make sure that any distortion is removed to keep these edges nice and straight. So now with both of these selected, I'm going to right click, go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so here are my two files in Photoshop. You can see they're open as two layers down here on the bottom right. And I'm just checking that they're both the same brightness. I mean, it's, it's quite important for this technique to work that both the files are the same brightness. This is why you should shoot in manual mode because you don't want the exposure to change between each shot. But also if the lighting conditions change while you're taking the photos, that can mess up the shots as well. If that happens, you can usually fix it by tweaking the exposure in software. Um, but I think we're okay in this case. I might have to tweak it slightly, we'll see. So the way this works is I'm gonna take my clean layer, which is actually this bottom one, and put it at the top. Then I'm gonna change the layer mode to subtraction. And boom, so basically the way this works is the top layer, which is our clean one, gets subtracted from the bottom layer, which means that the only thing left over is the fingerprints because they're the only things that change between the two shots. And if I zoom in, you can see we have some pretty nice fingerprint detail. There's dust, there's smudges. This is exactly the kind of thing we need for our smudgy, fingerprinty kind of texture. 
Now if you do see any like weird little bits of reflection or like the outline of the camera, then the way to fix that is to go to your underneath layer, image, adjustments, exposure, and just bring the exposure down a little bit. But the more consistent the lighting is between the two shots, the less like you the less likely you'll have to do this. And usually with textures, you'll have a one-to-one -one ratio, which is a square image. So just pick the area that you want that has the coolest looking fingerprints and trim away any of the excess border. So I'm just gonna pick this area over here and let's start with that and we'll see how that looks. I'll set the size to be 4096 by 4096. So then you would just go File, Save As, and then save it as whatever type of file you'd like. If you want the maximum quality, I think you should save it as TIFF because that gives you a 16-bit file. But um, TGA, JPEG, PNG, they should all work fine as well. All right, so I just threw together a very quick material in Substance Designer, just so you could see sort of the effect that this type of map has. And you can see I, I just plugged it into the roughness channel. You can see that here. And um, it gives me this really nice, like fingerprinty, smudgy kind of texture. This would be good on, you know, any kind of like, especially like smaller handheld type of objects that you'll be seeing close up. This just adds a whole new level of realism. You'll notice I've got this levels node here. I did have to do a slight little tweak to the levels. You could do that in Photoshop as well, but I prefer to do it non-destructively inside of the program itself. Um, I find that I almost always have to tweak it a little bit, like it depends on the program you're using, things like that. So, so yeah, make sure you mess with the levels a little bit if you need to adjust it just until it looks good. All right, so that's how you make a set of your own. As I said earlier, there are a few more things you can do if you wanna get even better quality results. For example, you can throw a black sheet on the ceiling above your surface and above the camera, and that'll block out reflections and it'll make the subtraction process work a bit better. You can also use a decent source of light, like a if you have a professional softbox, you know, a window isn't perfect because the lighting could change throughout the day especially if there are clouds going over. So keep that in mind. So what if you don't have the equipment needed or you don't have the time or you just wanna get your hands on a nice high quality set of these textures? I'm actually gonna start selling a pack that I've put together. I'm really proud of this set. It's eight textures. They're all tiling, they're all 16 bit. And I made them using some of the techniques that I was talking about earlier. And I actually, it took me a few days to get the technique down and to really extract the most quality that I was really hoping for. So I think you're going to be very happy with these. And I also used my Nikon D850, which is a really high resolution, full frame professional camera and lens. If you want to pick up a set, check it, check down in the description. I've put a link to my ArtStation page and you'll be able to go there and download them. Remember to put them in the roughness channel for best results. And depending on the software you use, you might have to tweak the levels a bit to make them look good. All right, well, I think that's all I've got for you today. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.